Back at it on the Big Sky Now. I'm Josh Dugan. Our weekly Big Sky Media panel is taking the week off for the holiday. So in honor of this heavyweight title matchup on the horizon between number one, South Dakota State, and number two, Montana, we'll go through our tail of the tape and take a look at how both teams stack up on offense and defense. Also keep an eye out next week for the Big Sky Media panel championship game preview. That will be available Wednesday, January 3rd. You won't want to miss that one. FCS and Big Sky football fans. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very hyped to get ready for the big game January 7th in Frisco, Texas, between the Grizzlies and the Jackrabbits, two of the best teams of, in the country. Have an opportunity to prove, it why, uh, prove why on the national stage. Let's dive into the matchup for the tail of the tape. All right, the Grizzlies and South Dakota State both won their respective conferences. Montana won the Big Sky, while the Jackrabbits took home the Missouri Valley crown. The Jackrabbits are 14-0 with regular season wins over the following playoff teams in the regular season. Youngstown State, Montana State, Drake, North Dakota, North Dakota State, Southern Illinois, and South Dakota. And in the playoffs, they knocked off Mercer, Villanova, and Albany to get to the title game. So they have 10 wins over playoff caliber foes this year. Quite impressive. The Grizzlies, meanwhile, are 13-1 on the year with regular season wins over playoff teams Idaho, Sacramento State, and Montana State. And in the postseason, they've beaten Delaware, Furman, and North Dakota State to get to the national championship game. The teams had two common opponents in NDSU, North Dakota State, and Montana State, the Jackrabbits beat Montana State 20-16 to at home in Brookings, South Dakota in a thriller to open the year. And they knocked off North Dakota State 33-16 to in Brookings as well. Well, the Grizz beat Montana State 37-7 to in Missoula to clinch the Big Sky title. And they beat North Dakota State 31-29 in double overtime in Missoula during the FCS semifinals. So common opponent-wise, football math doesn't always add up. I say that jokingly a lot. But just something to think about. They do have some common foe. So it can help you game plan at least. All right. Let's get into the offenses, starting with the quarterback play. We all know in football nowadays, you got to have the quarterback, and both teams do have a guy at quarterback who can make it happen. Grizzlies and the Jackrabbits both have that guy. For the Grizzlies, it's Clifton McDowell. He'll be under center for the Grizzlies, and Mark Gronowski will take the snaps for the Jackrabbits. McDowell took over the starting job after the Grizzlies lost to NAU. While Gronowski is in his third year as a starter for the Jackrabbits, he led him to the national title last season. He did redshirt in 2021 due to an injury. This year, he Gronowski has thrown for has thrown excuse me for 28 touchdowns to only four interceptions. He has 2,800. 83 passing yards, and he's completing 69% of his passes in the run game. He also gets the job done as well. He can be a threat in the run game, seven touchdowns and 349 yards rushing. As for the Grizz, McDowell transferred in from Central Arkansas after, after stints at the JUCO level and FBS level. So he has some experience but didn't get a ton of playing time until this season, and he's really shown now that he's well-deserving of some playing time. On the year, McDowell has 13 touchdown passes and three interceptions while completing 58% of his passes, and he's passed for 1,861 yards on the ground. McDowell's been a big-time weapon for the Grizzlies. He's rushed for 751 yards and nine touchdowns. Both quarterbacks have dual-threat capabilities to make plays with their legs and their arms, so both the Grizzlies and Jackrabbits will likely have their hands full on both uh, on both sides sides of the ball. These defenses are going to have their hands full with McDowell, Gronowski, more of the story. So, going to be fun watching these two QBs go at it, making plays. Onto the running backs, both teams have true strengths in the running back room. South Dakota State's Isaiah Davis is a star in the making, possible NFL pros. He is a star at the FCS level, but he's a potential NFL prospect. He rushed for 1,500 yards this year, 17 touchdowns. And the Grizz, they have Eli Gilman, who earned the Jerry Rice Award for top freshman in the entire country at any level in the, at the FBS, excuse me, at any position in the FBS. He's rushed for 950 yards and 12 touchdowns this season. So both teams have that real playmaker in the backfield. They also each have another running back to complement their star, Lamar Johnson has 750 rushing yards and four scores. He's a name to watch. And the Grizz, Nick Osmo, he rushed for eight touchdowns and 637 yards. He's a bruising running back, definitely a name to watch. Adding the rushing ability of McDowell and Gronowski. And all of a sudden, you have a lot of pieces in the run game for both teams who can really get the job done. So, you know, it might come down to who can get it done more on the ground in Frisco. And that might be the difference maker because both teams are going to want to start their offenses surrounded by the run game. All right, next up, the receivers for both teams, starting with Montana, they got three go-to guys in the passing game. Aaron Fonts, Keelan White, and Junior Bergen. Bergen leads the team with 55 catches. He's tied for the team leading touchdowns. He has five, so does Fonts. And Bergen has racked up 766 yards receiving, while Keelan White leads the team with 779 yards on 50 catches. So he's a bit of a big play threat. White is, both guys are, but White definitely can make some big plays. And Bergen, we know in the return game, 
And when he gets in space on offense, he's a true threat. As for the Jackrabbits, they have the Yonke brothers, Jaden and Jackson, two of the biggest threats. They are the two biggest threats, excuse me, in South Dakota State's passing game. Jaden leads the team in receiving yards, touchdowns, and catches. He has 52 grabs for 891 yards and nine touchdown reception. Receptions. Jackson, meanwhile, has 47 catches for 752 yards and five scores. They do have a six foot seven tight end, Zach Hines, who has seven touchdowns as well. Definitely a name to watch. And freshman Griffin Wildy, who averaged nearly 20 yards per catch this year and did have six touchdowns. So a big play threat for the Jackrabbits. And he's a true freshman, I believe. As for the offensive line play, it's hard to look at how those things stack up. But one interesting stat, according to some research I did, was South Dakota State only allowed 10 sacks all season. Montana allowed 36 sacks on the year, which was in the bottom third of the country. That could be a big thing to watch for because if one team can put the pressure on the opposing quarterback while the other team's protecting their guy, that can have a major impact on this game, as you know, football fans. So that's one to keep an eye out on for sure. How does the defensive line of the Grizz do get into Gronowski? And can the Grizz offensive line protect McDowell? That's always a key matchup to watch, but I think it's going to be extra important in this one with high caliber Front sevens on both sides of the ball and high caliber offensive line play despite the sacks from the Grizz. So we'll see what happens there. Last offensive stat we'll look at before jumping to the defensive side of the ball. The Grizzlies do have the 16th best scoring offense in the country. They score about 32 points per game. Well, South Dakota State has the third highest scoring offense in the country, putting up 38 points per game. So despite both these teams having elite defenses and kind of making their living on the defensive side of the ball, they have the offense to put up some fireworks in Frisco, Texas, January 7th. So keep an eye out for a little bit more points on the board then I believe the over-under was set at about 50 points. We'll see what happens. Originally, I was thinking the under. Now I'm moving more towards the over, but you never know. Before we move along, quick shout-out to our friends, MNC Tire and Kalispell. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you to MNC Tire and Kalispell. All right, as for the defensive side of the ball, this is going to be a battle of top five scoring defenses. The Grizzlies coming at number five. They allow just under 17 points per game. South Dakota State defense is allowing. This is a number you almost have to double check because it's almost unheard of in today's college football. Under 10 points per game, just a little over nine points per game. So that's really impressive. The Jackrabbits, their leading tackler is Jason Freeman. He has 96 total. Braxton Hill has been a tackling machine for the Grizzlies with 116 total tackles. Safety rider uh, Meyer and linebacker Tyler Flink, two other Grizzlies names to watch. They make a lot of plays around the football. Isaiah Stahlberg is a name to watch for the Jackrabbits. Is another guy who eats up a lot of tackles for South Dakota State. One other key player for the Jackrabbits, when healthy, Adam Bach, former All-Americans, Dealt with a few injuries over the past few years, but he's played nine games. When he plays, he's a standout defender. He has 54 tackles on the season. So if he's involved, that's a guy who's going to make his presence felt if he's healthy. Up front, for the Grizzlies, they feature Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, Alex Gubner. He's the anchor in the Grizzlies' defense. Just an absolute beast for them. Hawaii transfer Riley Wilson, another name to watch for the Grizz. Eight and a half sacks on the year despite missing two games. And Kale Edwards is another guy who has four and a half sacks and has a team-high two forced fumbles for the Grizz. He's had a couple big clutch plays for the Grizzlies throughout the year. Just a name to remember around the front line, making plays near the quarterback. As for South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, they don't rack up a ton of sacks. This was interesting to me. 24 on the year to the Grizzlies, 34. But when you're allowing 10 points per game, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So what that tells me about the Jackrabbits they make opposing teams earn everything. They don't take a lot of chances on defense. They make you beat them. And that's sometimes in today's college football can be hard to do if you have a stout defense like South Dakota State. Make teams make mistakes by having to throw the football into a lot of coverage, those kind of things. So they've won 28 straight. So what it's working. I was just shocked to see only 24 sacks on the year from such a high-powered defense. But playing scheme football and knowing what they're doing, that being said, defensive end, K. Turver leads the Jackrabbits with six sacks, and Quentin Hicks is next up with four sacks. They're both defensive ends. Last up, let's look at the pass defense for both teams, the Jackrabbits and Grizzlies. Let's check it out. South Dakota State allows about 164 yards per game, seventh best in the country. Montana is coming in as the 58th ranked passing Defense in the country allowing 208 yards per contest. Some of that's playing in the big sky. Teams love to air out the football. Some of that is, you know, maybe the Grizzlies were susceptible to the passing game a little bit. Probably a little bit of both. But the big sky definitely teams like to air it out and throw a lot. So that was probably an impact there. Key players in the secondary on the Grizzlies. Trevin Gradney has a team high five interceptions. Trajan Cotton had two picks. Corbin Walker had a team high eight pass breaks up, breakups. And the game ceiling pick for North Dakota State. 
And a name we mentioned earlier, Ryder Meyer, like, makes a lot of plays around the football, and he's also been effective in pass defense as well. The Grizzlies are a team who rolls out a lot of guys in the secondary. They have a lot of depth, so that's where they're strong for sure is their depth. The Jackrabbits, they got Deshaun Gales. He had a solid year for the Jackrabbits. A couple media outlets have him as an FCS All-American. He had two picks. And Tucker Large and Dallas Bynum, or Beanham, excuse me, share the team high in interceptions with four apiece. They also share the team high in pass breaks up, breakups with seven. And that linebacker we mentioned before, Jason Freeman, he gets it done in pass defense as well. He had two interceptions and four pass breakups, tied for third on the team in both categories for a linebacker, so he's definitely no slouch in the pass game. The Grizz won't want to pick on him too much if he's lined up on someone in the slot because he can get it done. So overall, a battle of two evenly matched foes on both sides of the ball. I said this last week on the Big Sky Now, it's not often you actually get the top two teams in the country facing off when it matters most, but I think this year it worked out just how it's supposed to. Got to love the FCS playoffs, letting it all play out. Bracket style. I know the FBS has had their ups and downs with the playoffs, especially this year, all the controversy around Florida State. So it's been great covering the FCS football, but it's been a little more transparent. And it's like you win, you go to the game. It's like you got to earn it. So that all being said, that'll do it for our tail of the tape for this heavyweight matchup between the top two teams in the FCS this year as we lead up to the championship game January 7th in Frisco, Texas. Thank you, as always, to our friends at MNC Tire and Kalispell for the support. More Big Sky now coming next week. Keep an eye out for that. On that note, I'm Josh Dugan, and I'm out. Thank you, as always, to everybody for checking out the show.